YouTube, thanks for checking out my channel and this is going to be just a quick video of a lighting or how to light the refrigerators on these older pop-up campers. Now your pop-up camper may not look just like this one but if you have an older era pop-up like this one which is a 77 uh, they're going to be essentially the same so let me show you what I'm looking at and uh, we'll get into it. Now the wind is pretty strong today so you might pick some of that up on the microphone really sorry about that but let's go ahead and jump into it. So you can see here this is a 77 Apache Ramada and these things are pretty cool you can pick them up relatively inexpensive we picked this one up at auction for $550 and the nice thing about this pop-up is no canvas and you can see how this is weathered over the years just picture a pop-up camper from 1977 and what the canvas might look like inside of that right now. It's probably not that great. Of course you have to polish the windows and keep them clean so they stay like this. Uh, but it's one of those things that you have real windows. You don't have zip-in windows or anything like that. This is a really nice camper overall and this is my brother so I think he's going to enjoy it but let's get back to the refrigerator I've got the access door open here and there's a couple of things you need to see inside here and I'm gonna go over just the basic idea of how it's done I'm not going to show you exactly what it looks like burning and all the other stuff but what this is is a heat absorption style refrigerator and how that works is it uses chemicals inside which is usually ammonia that would all evaporate when heated and that evaporation causes cooling and of course that cooling is sent inside of the refrigerator so it's kind of strange that heat makes cooling but it does and in this case you can heat up that chemical three different ways this is a 12 volt plug-in and you can operate a heating element through a transformer basically in here and the element is up in here to heat everything using 12 volts of power which would be from a battery or you can as you can see here if the camper is plugged into shore power like this one is the power cord runs into the garage there you can plug this in and now you're heating that element here on 110 or 112 however you want to say it uh, 15 amp service and then you have gas okay so everything is controlled then from this box right here and you can see it says off AC DC gas on and then up here it says gas off and that's where this red line's pointing so the gas is turned off and the DC and the AC is turned off if you want to do this on AC electricity where it's plugged into the wall and you're running on shore power you just put it to that position there and the element will start heating up once the refrigerator is plugged in if you want to run on battery power you flip it all the way over to here and at that point it runs off 12 volts if a battery is hooked up now you can see whenever these knobs are over in the electric positions whether it be DC or AC this knob can't turn there's a notch cut out for it now if we want to run on gas we put that all the way over and now that allows the propane to come on and you turn the gas on now at this point the propane's not going to run because it has to heat up the thermocoupler which tells this unit at that point that it is okay to turn on the main gas supply and allow the gas that is coming into this line right here over here out of the picture a little bit to then be allowed to go through this valve and into the burner tube assembly but the thermocoupler has to reach a certain temperature before that happens and the way they do that is by allowing this button to be depressed you can see I'm depressing and it's a blue button and that allows gas to temporarily go out until you can heat up the thermocoupler so once the gas is on of course your propane tank is plugged in and turned on and you hold this valve you can click the igniter and when you click the igniter it puts a spark over here at this burn chamber and it then at that point allows the gas to heat up as long as I'm pushing this button right here that thermocoupler and once the thermocoupler realizes that it's warm and it sends the signal back to this control unit that everything's okay at that point then it will allow the gas to go through this tube 
into the burn chamber without holding that button and will start its heating process. Now I have this little access cover open because sometimes when these thermocouplers go bad or your igniter to go bad, you may need to manually light it. And when you manually light it, you would just put a lighter stick, I call them, the stick lighter, in there and uh, light the flame. And again, you'll be holding this the whole time until it ignites and stays lit even after you let this button loose. But that's essentially it. At that point, you'll start noticing that up here at this chimney, everything starts getting really warm. Uh, this thing raises to about 190 degrees to 200 degrees as far as the temperature and everything starts heating up and the refrigerator starts cooling. Of course, when you want to shut everything off, it's best to go ahead and turn the gas off at that point. Once this is all running and burning, you can close the door and the door is vented as you can see, so the gas fumes will escape and the refrigerator, the backside, is sealed off from the living quarters. So there's no fumes, there's no heat, there's nothing like that being transferred into the living quarters. So not so much of a big deal. Once you understand the basic operating principles of these things and how they work, they're pretty straightforward. Even the bigger units, the ones that you see on big campers, it's basically the same thing. There's always something that you have to depress and hold to get the flame to start to where the heat can then tell the thermocoupler that everything is okay and there is heat present that means there's a flame present so it's okay to turn on the gas and operate as normal well I hope this helps you out and if you like this video click like or subscribe and I'll try to get more on like it now if you have an interest in RVs in general check out my other YouTube channel RV Daydream and you'll be able to see all kinds of videos on us and our RV journey thanks for watching guys appreciate it bye